Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art, and I wanted to talk to you, uh, this is going to be the first of many videos that we put out, hopefully not too many before we're effective, but um, I have been recently speaking with Mimi German up in Portland, she's an anti-nuke activist who's been very actively engaged in working to get the Columbia Generating Station shut down. She and Mark Kasevere have been working to understand the complications of how complicated they've made for us to shut this down, even if we don't want it, even if it presents a problem. There are lots of ways that they can continue to keep it open. Um, as a background, let me just tell you about it. It is sitting up uh, 15 miles away from Hanford on the Hanford Reservation at the mouth of the Columbia River, where the Columbia River ewes up to go to Seattle. And in fact, Seattle is a big, the Seattle Utility District is one of the big um, I guess they call stakeholders. And uh, in order for us to get the Columbia Generating Station shut down, that utility company would have to want it, just like the utility company in Vancouver. Um, if you go to No Nukes Northwest, and I'll put a link at the bottom, and go to the um, info page, I think it is, uh, or about the site, I think that's the name of it. There's a huge list of all these utility companies. You can follow the links and see who's on there and who does what. These are all the people that it's going to take for us to close them down. Now, let me explain to you why it's so dangerous. I have known about this for two years. When I first got involved in the Fuku fight, uh, there was a symposium up in Hanford, and I did videotape it and put it up on my channel. So you can look for it. I'm not the best videotaper. I'm I'm too active of as a participant to be a really great photographer when I've gone to these things. But I put it up anyways because I wanted it. The information was great. Uh, there was state representative, Washington State Representative Pollitt. There was an attorney. There was a person from the Hanford Challenge. There was a victim who lived around there who had been sick all of her life, and there were Native Americans in the audience who were actively engaged, and there were potato farmers who were very concerned, and that was the first I had ever even thought about it, but a gentleman in the audience brought up a great comment that if anything happened in Hanford, anything at all that caused it to close down, you know, and we had this big catastrophe in Hanford, like if there is a nuclear meltdown or even a mild shutdown where they could not go in, they had something go wrong at, at the Columbia Generating Station, like a, a meltdown or something that caused them to not be able to go in and they had exposure of radiation. Nobody could get near Hanford for two weeks because it's only 15 miles away from the Columbia Generating Station. And when there's a nuclear meltdown, there is a 55-0 radius. You can't go near there for a long time. I mean, even the full hazmat suit with the radiation that is uh, emitted in a meltdown for the first two weeks in a 50 mile radius, you'll be dead in 20 minutes. Nobody could go to work at Hanford. And this potato farmer was asking, what are we going to do in the case of a meltdown at Columbia Generating Station? How am I going to protect my farms? And, you know, most of the country's potatoes are, are grown downwind, and most of the wheat is also grown downwind. That's not to count all the other textiles that are produced, the, the beef, the cattle, the sheep, all the other things that are around that whole breadbasket area that is, would be exposed to downwind from Hanford and the Columbia Generating Station being in a complete meltdown. Now, I knew that two years ago, and I was really busy getting the Post-Ignorance Project off the ground. And uh, just as I was exiting the Post-Ignorance Project, Mimi German put up a post on her Facebook page that said, what is it going to take, you guys, for people to get actively engaged to get this fucker shut down? She didn't put it that way, but she was right in her tone and in intent. She basically said, "What are we going to need another Fukushima? Because that's what it would be. Honestly, if there is a meltdown at the Columbia Generating Station and we can't get into Hanford, it's going to be far worse, far worse than Fukushima. You think it's bad now? 
Wait till Hanford goes unattended for two weeks. That is really catastrophic. Now, the Columbia Generating Station is sitting right on top of a known earthquake fault. The physicians, Oregon Physicians for Social Responsibility hired their own geologists in 2013 because the government refused to act on knowledge that they had been told that there was an earthquake fault underneath the power plant. The geologists found out two things. Yes, indeed, there's a very active earthquake fault, and they anticipate it will be a 9.0 or greater at some point within the next 20 years period. It is going to happen. And they think it's going to be a big, gigantic earthquake. Now, the Columbia Generating Station is really can only be maintained up to a 6.4. They are now saying they can maintain it up to a 7. But if there was a 7.2, we're talking major meltdown. Because every degree is 100 times worse. I mean, you guys understand that, correct? So it's not like 7.2 isn't as bad as a 7.0. It's like severely worse. This is why it gets worse and worse the higher the number goes. And then the second thing is about that is that the Columbia Generating Station is 15 miles away from Hanford, which means if there is a meltdown, no one can get in. The, the other bad part that they are ignoring at the Columbia Generating Station since 2001 they have a cracked pipe that goes underground, and they have not done a sonogram, or they haven't done any investigation to figure out how deep it is, you know, what the catastrophic event could be on it. Uh, there's a bunch of technical words that I heard thrown around when this was all being explained to me. I don't remember them. But let's just put it to you this way, folks. It's not good. It's actually worse than what I thought it was. I got involved in this because Mimi German a couple weeks ago put out a Facebook post going, what the? Is it going to take? And then I remembered, hey, I, you know what? She's right. I went to that symposium. I got busy with the Post Ignorance Project. I put it in the back of my head, and I left it alone. And I've been talking about, oh, it's so bad, it's so bad, it's so bad, but I have not taken action. So I have recently decided that I'm taking action, and I'm going to take action every day on this, every single day. Because we need to get the Columbia Generating Station shut down. We need the people that can make that decision to change their minds that it's not that bad and to take some action and to have some courage. So we're putting some research together to figure out the numbers and the economic impact and how it would really affect this area. Because, frankly, it's all about the money. And the people who are doing it are concerned that their constituents will be pissed off at them. So we need to overcome that obstacle before we can actually take action because otherwise we're just waiting for an earthquake to happen. And I personally want to prevent that. And even if we had the Columbia Generating Station shut down tomorrow, it's still going to present some issues if we have a big, bad earthquake. It's not like we're out of danger. But it won't be so bad. It's just it, it, the crime against humanity from nuclear is beyond comprehension. And how the so-called scientists, I refuse to call these, I'm not going to cuss at them. How they can call themselves scientists is just beyond me. They are not scientists. They are paid lackeys. And it is time for the, us to encourage them to find their integrity and to change their minds. So this is going to be the first of many videos. Um, today is August 28, 2015, and um, you'll be hearing from me again soon on this. On my radio show, The Age of Vision Radio, this next Wednesday, I'll be interviewing Mimi German, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. on Wednesday. I think that will be August the 2nd, or maybe the 3rd. I'll have to look at the calendar. I don't think I can see it from here. But uh, Put your courage feet on, you guys. We really need it. And this, you know, this is an urgent matter. And I think it's probably more urgent than Diablo Canyon. We certainly don't want to have two Fukushimas going on at once in the world. So hopefully we can all get active. Do what we can. Call your utility company and tell them you do not want nuclear power purchased from anybody. Just say no to nuclear. Call your utility company. Put it into writing. Write them a letter and say, we do not want to use nuclear power. Especially if you're in Seattle or Portland or Vancouver or Port Orford, any place that's in Oregon or in Washington, for sure, we need to be calling up and saying no 
to nuclear. No, thank you. We would rather have solar. Let's have wind. Let's figure something out other than that. I mean, for goodness sakes, we could just get, like, turbines like these. They could make turbines being turned just by water. We have enough water in this state. Anyways, I digress, but I'll talk to you guys later, and um, put your courage feet on. We definitely, definitely need our courage feet, because these people are not going to go down easily, and you know what? If we if they do not change their mind, then we are going down. And this is how serious it is. We say stuff about the Japanese and how sad it is for them. Well, guess what? That could be us. In fact, it will be us. We know what's coming. We know what's happening. So it's up to us to stop it. We can stop it. And we can encourage them to change their minds. And you know what? With our power of belief, they will change their minds. And they will change their minds before there's a catastrophic event in Washington. And wiping out all of Portland and most of Seattle. And I venture to say the entire breadbasket for America. So put your courage feet on. Let's take some action. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.